Hello, Holly. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? In this year of 2020, what is life like for you right now? You know, I know a lot has been going on, but it's just hard to get too, too, I mean, I want to try and be the most positive I can with anything that's kind of negative, but um, life is pretty good. Yeah. It's still a, a very big blessing, and um, you know, a lot of people are out of work, but I got to fight in January right before all of this happened, so um, I haven't really been stuck with a, a lot you know I'm, I'm more kind of just trying to be supportive for other people who yeah. are kind of dealing with hard times so. and you still get a fight coming up yes something to look forward to absolutely i'm ready to get back into training it is you know when your whole life is that one goal and every day that's your kind of your you know your motivation is to get up and go work out and then you really can't it's like yeah i can go run on my own and do some workouts on my own but it's still not the same um as when the gyms were closed, and so it kind of does. It changes a lot. Um, I mean, I stayed motivated still, but I also enjoyed not having to stress about a fight. You know that like deadline that's on your mind the whole time. Uh, Any time that I've had time off of a fight has been because of injury, basically since I was 20. Mm -hmm. So this was the first time I've actually been healthy time off, and I enjoyed it. I want to go back to not just the beginning of your MMA career, but why was fighting and combat and boxing, why did that grab you? I honestly don't really have like an ex exact reason why this actual sport really grabbed me, but I know after having my first fight, just that feeling of complete excitement and that you succeeded and it was up to you nobody else and it's at the I mean so I've done team sports and it's amazing when you win as a team there's a a feeling of being together and what you worked on together and then there's a feeling of when you don't get me wrong we fight on our own but we have a lot of help uh, mm -hmm. on the way but you still have to fight alone you compete alone and there's just a different feel of satisfaction with that. Uh, it's just intensified. And I've also done gymnastics, soccer, swimming, diving. Soccer is a team. The rest are. You can you compete by yourself. But it's still different to go out and just perform a routine. You, know, you can practice a whole bunch of scenarios and combos and things like that, but depending on what your opponent does in a fight, it's not just going out and performing this one thing that you've just tried to perfect. It's, there's so much more to it. You know, it's um, offense 100% and defense 100% all the time. And so I don't know if that just grabbed me more to be just more intricate and more intense um, that I just find myself wanting to put more and more time into it. To be as accomplished as you were as a boxer, why was it time to focus on MMA? I trained my entire boxing career out of this same gym that I'm at now. And everybody was doing MMA, kickboxing, you know, very few people actually had boxing fights. So I would spar at the same time as everyone else and I was barefoot 90% of my sparring days uh, for boxing. I never really wore any boxing shoes. And when everybody sparred with me, it was just, they just did boxing with me for that sparring round. And I still have the same training partners as I do now. Um, and with that being said, I also would kind of just do kickboxing in between training camps. Once my fight was over, I thought, oh, I'll kickbox for a while until I get another boxing fight scheduled. Um, I was boxing, my average every year was four times a year, all the way up to even six times a year. So I really didn't have a lot of time off of boxing. I was very active. Um, and Julie Kedzie came to train at our gym and she does MMA, you know, she's, um, retired now, but they would say, Hey Holly, um, cause we're the same weight, you know, Julie's fighting. She's kind of a tall kickboxer girl. She kind of goes for trips, whatever. So just, you know, kickbox with her and try and take her down. And I'm, well, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll try. And Mr. Winklejohn would just kind of be like, Holly, just, just try and throw her down. And it's just. She's gonna have to worry about this, this. She needs to stay focused on the technique. And I said, okay. And I found myself like 
the first couple times I took her down, I got her, but she landed on top. You know, she'd roll through and I would be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get her down and I'm gonna land on top. Like, I don't wanna get rolled over. And I just found myself starting to really enjoy it. And I thought, you know, I kinda wanna get into it. And that's kinda just what started it is when I started doing more MMA. I knew I loved the kickboxing part. I had done that in amateurs. So the actual MMA though, like with the wrestling, as soon as I started to actually feel it, I, I knew that I wanted to get into it. Yeah. You were already accomplished in mixed martial arts, but to headline UFC 193 against Ronda Rousey, what do you remember about the buildup of that fight? You know, I remember it was huge, um, but it wasn't like it came as a shock or too soon or anything like that. It was one of those things that actually when uh, we negotiated my contract with the UFC, uh, my manager had them put in a whole separate contract in case I fought Ronda. And they were like, she's never even fought in the UFC and you're trying to, you know, talk about, like negotiate a title fight. And he's like, I already know you guys are gonna throw her at Ronda early and I already know Holly. She's gonna get in there and wanna do things and she'll wanna take it. And I just, you know, so that was something actually I already talked about. And my management and my coaches, um, they told me straight up before I even fought in the UFC, they're like, they're, they're gonna, I say two fights, three fights tops, they're gonna throw you for the title. So don't be surprised if it comes. So I guess when it came after only having two fights in the UFC, I mean, I had such good guidance by my management and team my whole career. So I just kind of was like, oh, well, they were right again, you know? And um, I was supposed to fight in January and Carlos Condit and Robbie Lawler were supposed to fight at 193 and Lawler got injured. So they postponed their fight and they just swapped. So already it was very soon. And then they said, oh, by the way, you're gonna fight November 15th. And it was kind of like, okay, that's six weeks away, you know? And um, a lot of people are like, Holly, you don't have to just take it. You can say, no, I'll still fight her a bit more time. And I talked to my coach and I was like, the thing is, if I don't feel like I'm ready right now, then mentally, how am I gonna feel like I'm gonna be ready? But eight weeks later, let's just do it. And I knew it was gonna be a lot. I knew it was gonna be hyped, but I was glad that it wasn't four months, five months. I'm glad that it was just, let's just do it. And um, I remember uh, Mr. Winkle John saying, Holly, you're gonna do 10,000 reps in you know three months or 10,000 reps in, in a month and a half. Let's just get the work in. That's what matters, just get the work in. So. Um, I kind of tried to just stay focused on more training and a lot of people were coming to me. This should be documented. This could be like, you know, you, you have the potential to shock the world. You should document this. And I said, you know what, I'm not, I'm going to come in and train. I don't really care about any cameras. I said, there's only one picture. They're like, you, these pictures are going to be around forever. And I'm like, there's only one picture I care about and that's this. And that one can go everywhere. And so uh, there was so much buildup outside but I, I just tried to stay focused in, in the gym and, and not really involve any more extra than I had to for the promotion. Do you remember what you were thinking about in the locker room moments before walking out? Oh, there was so much hype. It was just, man, it's, um, I remember uh, laying, writing down my game plan um, papers. I was just laying on my stomach and I remember Kyle Nope came in and he had just won uh, from a front kick body shot knockout. And I was so mad at him. I was like, God, I wish I was in your shoes, like fight over with a knockout and no injuries. And he's like, well, it's gonna be both of us. And, um, and I remember thinking, yeah, why not? And it was just kind of one of those moments. It's like I was feeling it, but just having another teammate there that was kind of in my same shoes, but his calmness was great because his fight was over, so it kind of kept like an even kill, you know, that, yeah, we can come out here and we can make it happen. And then when we started to warm up, um, just my confidence of my team in me just made me feel like, yeah, we belong here for a reason. And um, the locker room was kind of short for some reason. It just seemed like a short amount of time. I don't know why. Sometimes it seems like forever. And um, they came and said, all right, you're up. And we had to get in a... Uh, golf cart and like go halfway around Etihad Stadium and then they had us waiting in the tunnel forever. And um, 
I remember the song Turn Down For What, Turn Down For What came on and I thought that was gonna be my song but they're still playing another one. I remember being in the tunnel, we were all, I was like pacing back and forth and I was like, yeah, turn down for what, let's go. And then um, my team's like, yeah, let's go. And so it was just one of those moments that it was just turn it up and, um, and then when my song came on, that was the longest walkout ever. I think the floor there holds as much as T-Mobile Arena all together. So the actual like walkout was just so long. And then the time for her to do her walkout at that point, I was just like, let's get this show on the road. And you got the show on the road. Do you have memories within the fight? Mm-hmm. Um, so there, there's a couple of, um, a couple of, you know, um, I knew she didn't tap my gloves and it's like, that's happened plenty of times. I've had plenty of girls and not tap my gloves. But I just thought, you know, it's not like she really like never does that. Sometimes she'll tap them hard, but I was like, mm, she's feeling different and I'm gonna use that to my advantage. And then, um, you know, when the fight started coming, we knew she was either gonna be real hesitant or aggressive and she came aggressive. So we were ready for it. And um, she did land like a hook one time. My mouthpiece, mouthpiece came out and I thought, well, let's not do that, Holly. Let's not make this look messy. Let's make it look clean, you know? So I fought uh, Christy Martin in boxing, um, you know, years before. And um, in the fight, Mr. Winklejohn had told me, you're gonna get her timing, Holly. You're gonna see it, see it from a mile away. And in the fight, I kept dipping under her punches and I literally would dip under and I would be like watching her finish the end of her punch. And so in the training for this fight, uh, getting close to the fight, he's like, Holly, there's gonna be a Christy Martin moment. You're gonna see her punches coming from a mile away and you're just gonna be able to see it. And in the fight, you know, I ducked under and she was coming so aggressive. She fell and, and I was just like, I got her timing, like it's there. And let's just, anything can happen, you know. She'll grab in any kind of scramble an arm bar. So I was just thought, keep focus, don't don't lose focus. But you, you've got her timing, like you're gonna, you're gonna do it as long as you stay focused. And you did it. I did it. What changed after that fight? You know, I think that, uh, I mean, life is crazy. Um, for me, I still feel like, I mean, I have my same friends, my same lifestyle, my same gym, my same coaches, my same team. Um, but, and locally, everybody here supported me in boxing, but it definitely got more, you know, just worldwide. And um, I still just wanted to fight though. And I mean, that, you know, career can go a lot of different ways. I didn't want to just be, you know, make it to that point and then be done. And um, I don't know, I feel like there's been a lot of things, you know, my, my life is definitely more in, uh, under a magnifying glass than it used to be, but uh, I don't mind it. I mean, um, I want greatness and I f feel like whatever has to come with it comes with it, but um, I mean, I've got to meet a lot of people that I never imagined being able to meet and become friends with. and. Um, but I've still stayed so focused on wanting to be able to fight. I mean, it's been a cr pretty crazy journey. Yeah. Did anything surprise you about getting that win and what it did to your life? Um, I guess the one thing that surprised me is I didn't realize how immediate it would be. You know, as soon as I landed in the United States, it was crazy and exciting. And, um, you know, I didn't even make it home. I just landed in LA and we started doing media and went to some boxing fights in Vegas. And so I did a lot of stuff in LA and I got to meet a lot of people I never thought I would meet. And then went to some boxing fights and I was walking into uh, MGM. And it was because I came from boxing, there was so much love there. And maybe women's boxing didn't have as much exposure, but because I was fighting Rhonda and everybody had seen that. And then they also were like, oh, she's from boxing. There was this huge uh, boxing backing. They were like, oh, they want the boxer to be able to go in there and actually like do it well. And so I was going to this fight and uh, I was walking into the arena and it was like, people just like, literally I couldn't even walk. They're like just rushing so much. It's like knocking me over and like the whole, it's uh, reminded me of just like a movie, and it's like this never would have happened walking through an MGM 
and it's not even like that anymore. It's just at the time, the box for that boxing fight, um, it was just like, wow, like what I did has like actually like been known and touched like this many people like all at one time. And it was just kind of a crazy, um, that was actually one of the, just a moment that sticks in my head sometimes that, um, but it was, it just was like, literally I was over in Australia across the world and, and literally, um, did something that the entire world watched and was affected by it was pretty cool. Yeah. So you go on then and now you're the champion and then you fight Misha Tate. And you kinda, yeah. And there's a lot that goes with that. And there's a lot of, well, I can't just be a one hit wonder. And there's a lot of stuff like that. And I know a lot of people, even to this day, you know, I've had title shots since then and I've let it slip through my fingers multiple times um, with Misha Tate. I was ahead a in the fight and then got choked out yeah. in the fifth round. And that's heartbreaking. Um, and that just shows anything can happen in there. And, and um, it's just, you know, then it's like, boom, boom, boom. I had never had three losses in a row in my life. Never. Ever. <laughs> I don't even, in anything. I don't think I've ever had three losses in, a, in just boom, boom, boom. And it's just one of those things um, that stayed in my heart, though. It wasn't like I was getting dominated in these fights. They were all kind of close fights. And, you know, a lot of people think back and forth how they could have gone and stuff like that. And But it just kept me hungry. Um, the only way to fix that sour feeling in your gut is by a victory. There's nothing else that would cure it. And so I just kept striving for it. And I'm st I still am. You know, I've had some wins, I've had some losses, but um, I still I still want to make it back to the belt. What was the biggest challenge of the losing streak? Uh, Self-doubt, I think is the biggest thing really with anything in life. I think a lot of people can really second guess themselves with anything in personal life and in, in professional life. And it was one of those things like, no, Holly, I know I made it here for a reason and go all the way through a boxing career, change careers and start a whole different career at, you know, being 30 years old to just walk away with my tail between my legs because things got a little tough. I'm here for a reason. I know I've fought to get here and I have capabilities to still keep learning. It's not over. I know that I've learned things in the gym. I know that I've evolved and I need to make it happen in the fight. And I just wasn't ready to give it up. Was there a point where you thought about it because the self-doubt was strong enough? No, I think that the times that I would kind of, the only, only time there was like, like as far as self-doubt, I would just like maybe picture fights and put myself in certain situations and like see myself not doing well. And it's like, no, 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 Holly, change your mindset. You can't be focusing on that. You need to focus on how you can do better. And so that's what I would start doing. Um, I think I would just wouldn't let myself get to the point where I didn't believe in myself. Because um, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who believes in me. It has to be me. I'm the one getting in there and doing it. And then to go to Singapore and get back in the wind column, mm -hmm. what did that do for you? Oh, I mean, it, it was a big joke after that. It's like, well, maybe we just need to fight overseas, you know, go to Australia, Singapore. Um, but it, it felt good, and it just it felt good to stick to a game plan. You know, a lot of... Uh, the fight was not like super super active until that but we knew that she'd be the type that would get frustrated and then run into a problem and I could expose that so I just kind of waited for it and I remember even in training my coach being like Holly picture the whole entire stands booing they might be mad but the, the opportunity is going to come so just don't rush it and run into something stupid and um, in that fight I remember actually like thinking like, I'm going to throw a question mark kick because we had been working on it a little bit for that fight and as soon as I thought that, my coach called it, and I was like, I'm gonna, like, if he's seen it, I'm seeing it at this, like, literally at the same time. And um, so I was just waiting for that next moment to kind of, that's the first time I've actually planned, like, a specific attack in a fight. Like, I'm going to wait for you to make a mistake, and I'm going to throw this exact kick at you. And they just happened to be there. So it's a different kind of satisfaction that it's like, it's not just a kick you just throw, it's like one that you actually, it's like you have to sell them on the front kick before you go up, you know, and it's just, so it was a, a win in its own, just as far as the fight, but it felt so good to be back in the win column. I just knew that one fight wasn't enough though, I needed to keep going, and 
you know, there's been ups and downs, but um, I'm still, I know that I've improved so much even since then. I know that they're still in me to, to show people what I'm capable of. To alternate wins and losses as you have over the last couple of years, what's the challenge in that? You know, I've never really like slipped low in the rankings. It's like, I know I'm right there and I know I have some losses, but they're also um, tough fights and with, you know, top ranked people. Um, my fight with Cyborg, it's like one of those things that was just a battle the whole time. Um, I know I didn't, I, I know I need to do more in a fight, but a lot of people are like, oh, it was two and two and two going into the round, into round five. And you go and look at round five and it's like, well, you kind of can throw that either way. I'm not sitting here saying that I got robbed, nothing like that. Um, I just know that it's not that these fights that I had were just like getting dominated or getting schooled, um, or getting, you know, just technically like shown up. It's, they've been battles, um. My fight with Jermaine Durandamy was a lot of people thought should have gone the other way because two of her most significant punches were after the bell. And I dropped her twice in the fight. Um, and I'm not, but, and by all means, I'm not saying that any of these that I'm like, oh, I got robbed or I got n none of that. It's just I learned from those situations to, uh, I need to be more clear with it no matter what. And um, so, yes, I've had losses for the belt, but they haven't, like I said, they've been. Um, really close fights all the time and so I think that that's just in me that I know that I'm still competing with the best all the time and I just need to not let it slip through my fingers anymore. I know going with Amanda Nunez I got knocked out. I'm not saying that was like a, a close fight but it also I know I'm capable of so much more than that. How would you describe winning the belt and now your journey of trying to get the belt back? It's just different. There's no way to feel that again. What I felt when I won the belt in 2015 is not how I'll ever feel again. There's no way to replicate that. But to win it again will be its own journey. It's going to be its own emotions. You know, to be able to make it back there again. Um, I don't really know if there's any female that's lost the belt and been able to go back and, and get it again. You know, so sometimes that's my motivation to show that it can be done. Um, I've always wanted to do things that can't be done. Um, I wanted to be the first champion that can go from boxing and then, you know, win world title in, in MMA. And I was able to do that. And I know things are capable when you really believe in it. Um, and to be able to go back and, and win the belt, you know, after going through such a, a, a up and down journey, it would be its own satisfaction. It's not gonna be the same though. How do you describe like the road that it is right now to get there? Um, it's more dull. <laughs> it is because people have, oh, they know who I am now and the excitement's been there. You know what I mean? And, and there's the expectation. And then if you don't present it, then they kind of are almost like angry about it, you know? So that is like kind of more bland. But like me and my heart, I know that I have so much more to do and I want to prove that to people. So that kind of sits more like on me. It's definitely not this like, you know, going into the belt for the first time is like, who is this girl? She's coming from boxing, what? She's only been in the UFC for two fights, wait, she's going for the belt, is this really gonna happen? And then like the shock, oh, she got it. There won't be that again, because now people know who I am. And they know that, that it's been like this. And it's just, it's gonna be a different, I don't think people would be shocked if I got the belt again, but it's, you know what I mean? Like it was the first time around, but I don't think, it's just different. But that doesn't mean it's, it's bland, like in my heart, I still want it. Otherwise, what am I still training for? What am I still fighting for? I said this going into my fight with, for the belt with Rhonda. They said, do you think, how long do you think you'll last? You know, Misha Tate was like one of the ones that lasts the longest with her. And I said, I'm not going for a participation ribbon and to say I just lasted longer than someone else. I'm going for the gold. And I feel like that with my entire career. I'm not here to just have the camaraderie of the team and you know, just to kind of be part of it and like, you know, stay comfortable fighting here. If that's where my mind's at, I need to retire. If it's not for greatness, if I'm not shooting for the best, if I'm not shooting for the number one position, then what would I be fighting for? And what keeps you going at this stage in your career to have that drive? I guess it's just addicting. Uh, a win is just addicting. It's like a, 
a high that you, you know, are trying to achieve and you're going after. Um, I'm also just, I don't know, I, I still care about it so much, I don't even picture myself really doing anything else in my life right now. I definitely don't want to be the, the fighter that everybody thinks should retire and all that, because I know people have talked about that because I'm 38 and I already had the belt and I haven't been, I've had title shots, but let go of that and like, I'm still ranked. I'm still there and there's a reason why I'm ranked there. This is not, you know, there's not politics really behind rankings for the most part. It's like if you win, you're ranked higher. If you're not, you're down. Politics are always involved with certain things, but there's a reason why I'm still there and capable of competing at this level. And so why would I want to let that opportunity slip through my fingers? Like you said, everybody knows who you are now in this world. The younger fighters are the ones, they want to fight you in the mm -hmm. way that you kind of came up and Rhonda was the name. Mm -hmm. You're like that name now that a lot of these fighters want to come up yeah. and test against you. Yeah. How does that make you feel? Uh, come try me. <laughs> <laughs> I know that it's, for me, it's, I still feel like I'm wanting to prove myself. So I guess I don't really think about it that much. I know that there's always fighters up and coming and that for me, the only thing that that means is, oh, here's another girl that's hungry. Here's another girl that's hungry. Um, but because I've been there and I know what it feels like, I don't want those, that hunger to overpower what I've got because I'm still hungry with more experience now and I'm still I'm still capable I'm still in good shape and I'm still I feel stronger than I did in my 20s you know um, and I know there's a lot of people that want to come in and you know some people might want to use me to build you know their name or what they're gonna do and uh, it just motivates me to be like nope you yeah, still view, view yourself as the hungry one yeah absolutely what are the biggest challenges you face right now? Mm. I guess I'm still, I'm still just, I'm fighting. I still have this mindset that's to face forward and, and, and go hard. Um, I don't really, I mean, I know that what a lot of people say, you know, that, that oh, I don't know if she's going to do it again. And, oh, she's had too many title shots and hasn't made it happen. Or, I mean, I know what, what's being said. But is it being a challenge for me? I mean, the first time I was going for the belt, everybody thought I was going to get my butt kicked anyway. You know, it doesn't matter really what anybody else thinks. Um, it's just up to me to put the hard work and, and keep going forward. So um, I guess the challenges I face are just um, making the most of, of my time right now. You know, I don't want to fight forever, but I'm not ready to retire. And so really just the challenge right now is just to stay healthy and, and keep training forward because that's where my passion still is. So you want to get the belt back, obviously. What's the plan? Do you think about the roadmap to make it happen? Well, I just got to win. And that has to start with this fight. You know, we just got to, got to win. And I want to do anything I can to make that happen. You never promised another day. You never promised. I mean, there's a lot going into one fight. You've got a team, you've got promotions, you've got, you know, your other opponent, obviously, that there's so many things that can go wrong. You can get injured, you can get cut, you can get, there's, there's, um, they cannot promise, I mean, we have our contracts, yes, but it's a very small window of opportunity to have a career in fighting, and my goal is just to stay healthy enough and focused for this fight in front of me and not really look too far. I know that I can't get to the belt without winning. So I just have, right now I just need to win this fight. So I guess you're a, you're a very live in the present type of person. Mm -hmm. And that helps your fighting career at this point. I do think that I am a live in the present. Um, probably drives a lot of people around me crazy too. Cause they'll be like, Hey, do you want to go like on a trip in November? And I'm like, Ooh, I'm not really sure if I'll be training for a fight at that point, so I'm really not sure. Yeah. Like, I can only plan for me. My life is always planned only around what fight's coming up. And when I do that, though, I, I think about it, and it's like, well, obviously that's still my priority because otherwise if I wanted an out, I'd be like, oh, yeah, let's go. And then if they called, like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not available that time for a fight or, you know, 
you can make a lot of excuses. Um, but I am, and every day is its own journey. I try to take what I can in from the gym. You know, I don't. I want to be a sponge. I don't ever feel like I go in and think I'm. I mean, I'm still trying to jab more. <laughs> still trying to learn every day. <laughs> yeah. And for right now, full speed ahead on the fight career. Absolutely. I have nothing else that is in my desire right now. So. It's, um, I'm enjoying actually, I, I feel like I live a fairly simple life. Just um, doing what I want to. Hang out with my friends, my family, I go train when I want. I kind of just don't feel this pressure um, to, I mean, if I, there's a lot, being 38, being a female, in, in both personal life and professional fighting. Everybody has an idea what you should be doing if you're 38 and still fighting and everybody has an idea if you're 38 and You're not married and don't have kids in personal life. Everybody has an idea of what I should be doing everyone and I don't really care because I always say who wrote the book. I'm the author of my own book my own story And I just want to write it day by day Continued success. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Appreciate it.